Welcome back to our uh, answer question and answer segment. Thank you for joining us. And uh, I want to uh, reply to a question that we got a few weeks back. It was on uh, Job uh, 31, 9 to 12. And we went through verse 9 a bit, but I've also worked on verse 10, so I just want to share a little bit of that. Uh, I'll read uh, those verses, Job 31, 9 to 12. If mine heart have been deceived by a woman, or if I have laid wait at my neighbor's door, then let my wife grind unto another, and let others bow down upon her. For this is a heinous crime, yea, it is an iniquity to be punished by the judges. For it is a fire that consumeth to destruction, and would root out all mine increase. And uh, in my previous reply, I really didn't discuss the word in verse 9, or if I had laid wait, which I'd like to address now, and then uh, move on to uh, verse 10, Lord willing. Uh, this term, or if I had laid wait, it's written as Arab, Strong's number 693, but it's pronounced uh, apparently Arev. And it's rendered 42 times in the following ways, lay in wait 26 times, liars in wait eight times, and ambush eight times. And we'll look at a few of these uh, citations. In Psalm 10, 8 through 10, we find this expression as he lieth in wait twice in verse 9. And in the context of that chapter of that psalm, it's speaking about the wicked. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places doth he murder the innocent. His eyes are privily set against the poor. He lieth in wait, secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth in wait to catch the poor. He doth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. He croucheth and humbleth himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. And when I was discussing uh, verse 9 uh, in this chapter, uh, we considered one of the passages, which was Proverbs 7, which has to do with the harlot, and is also, or can be, also spelled as woman or wife or adulteress. Uh, and uh, that is the uh, Hebrew Strong's number 802, it's Isha. Um, and spiritually, the, the harlot or the adulteress is pointing to false gospels, which uh, are, are, de are designed to deceive. Um, uh, in verse 21 of Proverbs 7, we, we also uh, find uh, this um, statement, Now is she without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. Again, this lieth in wait is uh, a rev, Strong's number 693. We also uh, see uh, this word 693 with regard to this same uh, woman, the adulteress or the harlot, in Proverbs 23, 27, and 28, and she's also called a strange woman. Uh, we looked at that previously as well. For a whore is a deep ditch, and a strange woman is a narrow pit. She also lieth in wait as for a prey, and increaseth the transgressors among men. So let's go on to Job 31, 10 to 12, even though we're just going to do 10 today. But I'm Lord willing, I'm going to try to work on this um, in the next couple of days and uh, post this as well. And by the way, I should mention that I do try to take all of these questions and answers and make docs uh, uh, about them and post those on our Facebook uh, group in our Facebook group, but if any of you uh, want, uh, if for some reason, if you're not on Facebook or if you know of someone that's not on Facebook and they want one of these, uh, we can easily uh, email it to them or, uh, or or mail it to them if if they if need be. 
Uh, this, again, is Job 31, 10 to 12. Then let my wife grind unto another, and let others bow down upon her. For this is a heinous crime, yea, it is an iniquity, an, an iniquity to be punished by the judges. For it is a fire that consumeth to destruction, and would root out all mine increase. So let's look at this word, then let my wife, which is the same word as I mentioned, Isha, uh, Strong's number 802. Um, the other terms in verse 10 are not found together, and so we're going to have to uh, consider them individually. Uh, for example, uh, let's go to grind, which is the first one. Uh, this is uh, uh, Strong's number 2912. Uh, it's written T-A-C-H-A-N, excuse me, but it's pronounced Tahan. And uh, this expression is found in seven verses, and it's generally rendered as grind or ground or grinders, uh, as we'll see. Uh, with regard to the manna that God gave his people in the wilderness, uh, we read in Numbers 11, verse 8, And the people went about and gathered it and ground it in mills, or beat it in a mortar, and baked it in pans, and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. Also in Deuteronomy 9:21. Uh, Moses is, is recounting the sin of Israel when he came down from the mount and he saw that they were worshiping the golden calf, uh, calves. And I took your sin, the calf which ye had made, and burnt it with fire, and stamped it and ground it very small, until it was as small as dust. And I cast the dust thereof into the brook that descended out of the mouth. And it doesn't say so here, but I believe in one of the other references, it, it talks about he made them drink uh, that water which had the ground up dust uh, of this, um, uh, this golden calf. And the, by the way, the, the, these were two Egyptian gods. They were actually uh, golden calves uh, that uh, they were primary gods that the Egyptians worshiped. Uh, if we go to Judges 16.21, we find this word, uh, and he did grind with regard to Samson. Uh, but the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza, Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass. And he did grind in the prison house. Now, I'm not sure if this is just... Um, a euphemism as far as the grinding, or if actually he ground uh, flour uh, in the prison. Because uh, the reason I say that is in Isaiah 47 2, it says, Take the millstones and grind meal. Uh, uncover thy locks, make bare the leg, uncover the thigh, pass over the rivers. Uh, and uh, on a positive note, normally, when the Bible talks about grinding meal, it has to do uh, with um, grinding some type of flour. And of course, that represents the Word of God uh, during the, the day of salvation in particular. But I'm not sure if that applies with Samson. It could be that it's just referring to the fact that, you know, he was being ground down because of the fact that they they put out his eyes, and here he is languishing, so to speak, uh, in this prison setting. Um, the, the other word is unto another. Um, let's see. Yeah, then let my wife grind unto another, uh, and it's also uh, let others bow down upon her. So it's, it's being used twice, one right next to the other. Uh, and this is uh, uh, Acre, uh, Strong's number 312. And uh, we find it, for example, in Deuteronomy 11:16. Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived, and ye turn aside and serve 
other, that's the word gods, and worship them. And there's many verses along these same lines where God is prohibiting, obviously, the worship of false gods or other gods because, and, and we're gonna read some of these verses. But uh, Deuteronomy 11:16 also has the same word, be not deceived, that we find in Job 31, 9. If mine heart have been deceived by a woman, and this is uh, Strong's number 6601, uh, Patha. Uh, let's also go to Job uh, 31.8. Uh, here again it says, Then let me sow and let another eat. Yea, let my offspring be rooted out or plucked up. Uh, Exodus 34.14, For thou shalt worship no other god. For Jehovah, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. And so, for this reason, we find so many scriptures that prohibit the worship of false gods. Uh, we also see this, incidentally, in Numbers 23, 27. Uh, and Balak said unto Balaam, Come, I pray thee, I will bring thee unto another place. Peradventure it will please God that thou mayest curse me them from thence. In other words, cursing the Israelites, which of course God didn't allow Balaam to do. And then lastly in Isaiah 42, 8, uh, we read this wonderful statement, I am Jehovah, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Uh, the next word is bowed down upon her, which is uh, Kara, uh, Strong's number 3766. Actually, it's curious that it appears three times in Judges 527 uh, regarding the death of Sisera, who represents uh, Satan. And it's uh, uh, expressed as he bowed three times at her feet, he bowed, he fell, he lay down at her feet, he bowed, he fell, where he bowed, there he fell down dead. Also in 1 Kings 19, 18, uh, God uh, tells uh, Elijah, yet have I left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal and every mouth which hath not kissed him. Uh, Psalm 17, 13, Arise, O Jehovah, uh, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Uh, also similarly in Psalm 78, 31, it says the wrath of God came upon them, and slew the fattest of them, and smote down the chosen men of Israel. And uh, one last uh, passage, uh, Psalm 95, 6, O come, let us worship and bow down, let us kneel before Jehovah our Maker. So here we see this uh, word in a, in a positive light. Uh, thank you again for that question, and I'm going to continue working on verses uh, 11 and 12 and try to get that out uh, as soon as possible, Lord willing. Um, the next question we got is, is the Gospel of John officially or biblically corrected or replaced with the Gospel of Lazarus? And I'll, I'll explain a little bit about this. Uh, the reason I, I've been mentioning Lazarus instead of John is just out of personal conviction. Uh, for example, I remember for the longest time there was a man at one of the family radio conferences and he kept bringing up the idea, you know, shouldn't we take uh, the, the name of the Lord, all in caps, L-O-R-D, uh, and say Jehovah instead of the Lord. And he kept bringing this up time after time after time. And finally, Mr. Camping uh, came to the conclusion that yes, this is a good idea. We should do that because this is exactly what it means. Uh, maybe there was some stigma with Jehovah Witnesses or 
something like that that, that uh, I guess historically maybe believers have, hadn't done that. But nonetheless, that began and then people started speaking about Jehovah whenever they saw L-O-R-D in caps. And that's kind of the same thing for myself. I felt convicted about doing this. If I'm wrong, I'm certainly uh, open to correction, but it does seem that Lazarus is indeed the author uh, of the fourth gospel. Uh, the other thing too is that, uh, from what I understand, the, the headings of the books of the Bible uh, are not inspired. They're not in the original. Neither are the verses uh, or the, uh, the chapter headings. Uh, and so this, of course, is very helpful because we can talk about Deuteronomy 8.12 and, and we can turn to Deuteronomy 8.12 and it's very, very, uh, it's a pragmatic thing and so it, it's a good thing. But suffice it to say, the headings of the books are not inspired. And so, and, and this is another uh, problem because for people that are not aware of, of the fact that Lazarus the one, is the one under divine inspiration that wrote this, when you speak, when they first hear it, they don't know what you're talking about. Okay, because they're used to hearing the book, the Gospel of John. And so you have to preface it, which I've been trying to do, by saying the fourth Gospel. Uh, but I do believe that, it, you know, just like with Lord Jehovah, that it's important if this is really true, then why shouldn't we not be using Lazarus instead of John, because John didn't write the book of John. Uh, Lazarus did under, under divine inspiration. Uh, so thank you for uh, bringing that uh, good question up. The other question that we've received is, do those dry bones in Ezekiel 37 connect to Joseph's bones reaching the promised land? And yes, I believe they do. Uh, it's actually the same word, uh, etzim, which is Strong's number, um, I think I got this right, no, I'm sorry, 6106, I think I made a mistake. Yeah, if I'm not wrong, 6106. Uh, for example, uh, if we read, let's go to Ezekiel 37. And we, we find um, this word, uh, 6106, in verses 1, 3, 4, 5, 7, and 11. The hand of Jehovah was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of Jehovah and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. Uh, verse three, and he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again, he said unto me, oops, yeah. Uh, again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of Jehovah. Thus saith uh, the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. Then down to verse 7. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. Uh, then in verse 11, then he said unto me, and this is significant, uh, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. And by saying that it's the whole house of Israel, I think we can understand this spiritually to be referring to the body of Christ to the elect, uh, whom Christ uh, paid for their sins prior to the foundation of the world. Now, if we, we, if we go back to Genesis 2.23, uh, we see this as well with, with Adam and Eve. Uh, uh, let's see. 
And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Adam represents Christ, as we've understood, and Eve uh, represents the elect. And so with, with that in mind, we can also uh, go now to uh, what we read about Joseph, Joseph's bones. Again, it's the same word, Strong's number 6106 uh, in Genesis uh, 5025. Uh, we read there, and Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones from hence. Now, if we go to Exodus 12:41, and again, these are all—all all these passages have the same word, uh, etz, etzim, etzim. Strong's number H6106. Um, all right, Exodus 12:41, And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the selfsame day, it came to pass that all the hosts of Jehovah went out from the land of Egypt. And we know that that spiritually pictures all of the elect coming into the body of Christ by May 21, 2011. If we go one chapter over, Exodus 13, 19, we, we read there, And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones away hence with you. So uh, I think he can also, the fact that his bones could also refer to those believers that had died previously so that not only did the living leave the land of Egypt, but also figuratively the dead um, represented by the bones of Joseph left as well. They all left. There was, there was this mass exodus uh, because that pictures, you know, God's uh, fantastic salvation that he orchestrated and of which, you know, this is uh, a picture of. Uh, if we go to Joshua to continue this, this journey of, of Joseph's bones, we go to uh, Joshua 24, 32. Uh, there we read, And the bones of Joseph, which the children of Israel brought up out of Egypt, buried they in Shechem, in a parcel of ground which Jacob bought of the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for an hundred pieces of silver. And it became the inheritance of the children of Joseph. Also, if we go to Psalm 3420, we read there, uh, I'll start with verse uh, 19. Uh, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but Jehovah delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. And this has a double meaning, if you recall, that not a bone of Christ was broken when he was on the cross. The two thieves beside, besides, beside him had not died, and so the Roman soldiers came because they had to hurry up because it was approaching sundown and the bodies had to be off the cross at the crosses at sundown and so they broke their legs to induce you know more pain and suffering and a quicker death however when they came to christ he had already uh died uh, he'd already given up the ghost 
And so there was no need to break his bone. And so uh, we, we find that on a physical level, but spiritually, we know that, like this verse says, he keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. In other words, not one of the elect is lost. Uh, just like Jesus said in, in one of the Gospels, all that the Father giveth to me shall come to me, and he that cometh to me I shall in no wise cast out. No one is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. In other words, they are kept, they are secure by God Almighty himself. Uh, one last verse, we'll go to uh, Psalm 22, 17. Uh, we read here, I may tell all my bones, they look and stare upon me. Uh, of course, you know, we see this in Psalm 22, which is a messianic psalm, but we also have to keep in mind that this also has a dual application because it's really uh, referring back to prior to the foundation of the world. If we were to go through this psalm carefully, verse by verse, and, and see uh, all of these different words and phrases. Um, I should also mention that uh, this has, uh, Etsim 6106 has an identically spelled root word, which is uh, at Psalm, which is 6105. And uh, we find that in, um, in Psalm 40, uh, 5 and 12. Many, O Jehovah my God, are thy wonderful works, which thou hast done, and thy thoughts, which are to usward. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more that can be numbered. Also in verse 12, uh, for innumerable evils have compassed me about, Mine iniquities have taken hold upon me so that I'm not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of mine head, therefore my heart faileth me. Uh, also, if we go to Psalm 105, 24. Um, And this is the word increased, uh, basically, or, or add. Uh, and he increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. And I forgot to mention that in Psalm 40, 5 and 12. I, I forgot to uh, underline which, which is the word... Um, I guess more than can be numbered in verse 5 of Psalm 40 than in 12, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure whether it's innumerable or um, they are more than, so I, I apologize for that, I just forgot to write that down. Uh, one last passage is Psalm 139 verse 17. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. So thank, thank you very much uh, for that question. Uh, I'm not sure if we have any other questions. We do? All right. 2 Samuel 2.13. Yeah, all the way to the end of chapter. Can you tell me what this is about? Ooh. All right. I'll try. 2 Samuel 2.13. Uh, starting where? Is it 2 Samuel 2, yes. starting in verse 13? Yes. 
let's see. Um, all right, let me, let me go ahead and read that. Uh, and Joab, the son of Zeruiah, and the servants of David went out and met together by the pool of Gibeon. And they sat down, the one on the one side of the pool, and the other on the other side of the pool. And Abner said to Joab, Let the young men now arise and play before us. And Joab said, Let them arise. Then there arose and went over by number twelve of Benjamin, which pertained to Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, and twelve of the servants of David. And they caught every one his fellow by the head, and thrust his sword in his fellow's side. So they fell down together. Wherefore that place was called Hel Kath Hazurim, which is in Gibeon. And there was a very sore battle that day, and Abner was beaten, and the men of Israel before the servants of David. And there were three sons of Zeruiah there, Joab and Abishai and Asahel, and Asahel was as light of a foot as a wild roe. And Asahel pursued after Abner, and in going he turned not to the right hand nor to the left from following Abner. Then Abner looked behind him and said, Art thou Asahel? And he answered, I am. And Abner said to him, Turn thee aside to the right hand or to, the, or to thy left, and lay thee hold on one of the young men, and take thee his armor. But Asahel would not turn aside from following of him. And Abner said again to Asahel, Turn thee aside from following me. Wherefore should I smite thee to the ground? How then should I hold up my face to Joab thy brother? Howbeit he refused to turn aside. Wherefore Abner with the hinder end of the spear smote him under the fifth rib, that the spear came out behind him. And he fell down there and died in the same place. And it came to pass that as many as came to the place where Asahel fell down and died stood still. Joab also and Abishai pursued after Abner. And the sun went down when they were come to the hill of Amma, that lieth before Geha, by the way of the wilderness of Gibeon. And the children of Benjamin gathered themselves together after Abner, and became one troop, and stood on the top of an hill. Then Abner called to Joab and said, Shall the sword devour forever? Knowest thou not that it will be bitterness in the latter end? How long shall it be then, ere thou bid the people return from following their brethren? And Joab said, As God liveth, unless thou had spoken, surely then in the morning the people had gone up, every one from following his brother. So Joab blew a trumpet, and all the people stood still, and pursued after Israel no more, neither fought they any more. And Abner and his men walked all that night through the plain, they, and passed over Jordan, and went through all Bithron. And they came to Mahanaim, and Joab returned from following Abner. And when he had gathered all the people together, there lacked of David's servants nineteen men and Asahel. But the servants of David had smitten of Benjamin and of Abner's men, so that three hundred and three score, three hundred and sixty men died. And they took up Asahel and buried him in the sepulcher of his father, which was in Bethlehem. And Joab and his men went all night, and they came to Hebron at break of day. I, I thank you for uh, bringing this up, but I've never worked on this chapter, and there's a lot in here, and so I'd rather not comment because, uh, like I said, I don't want to speculate. But thank you nonetheless for uh, bringing this up. Uh, if we have any other questions, if you have a question, please feel free to post it. Uh, maybe we can play a hymn. No other, no other questions? All right, I guess we don't have any other questions, so uh, let's just close in prayer. 
Father, we do uh, thank you for these uh, questions. We thank you for this opportunity to have read these various uh, verses and passages. And again, Father, we give you the praise and the glory and the honor. Uh, Father, as uh, we know that uh, your word is truly a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, even though we might not fully understand uh, some of these things, many of these things, yet, Father, we look to you for wisdom and for understanding which you alone can give. And so we pray that you would continue to bless your people the rest of this day as we continue to keep our focus on things above. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you again for joining us. And if you're able to, we will have our um, Bible reading tonight at 7.30 Pacific time, and everybody is welcome. Uh, and we pray that you will continue to have a blessed time of fellowship uh, as you fellowship uh, with the Lord.